So I'm here with Dave. Uh, he actually just randomly came up to me while we were at this coffee shop here outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. And he's got an awesome truck bed camper here that he did entirely homemade. So we're going to take a look at it. Before continuing on, I want to give a special thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. If you follow the link in the description below and then apply the promo code ELEMENT at checkout, you can get an 83% discount on an annual subscription to the Surfshark service, as well as an additional month for free. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, though, later in this video. I also want to give a disclaimer here as well. This video was shot over a month ago at this point. Like I said, Shannon and I were at a coffee shop in Las Vegas just getting some work done. All the coffee shops, restaurants, everything was still open. It was before all the shelter in place and everything like that things did start to get a little crazy with this whole virus thing a few days after we shot this video but i figured it was worth sharing at this time you know just because i think it is a really awesome camper he did an amazing job with this truck camper and also i think it's a nice change of pace from everything that's been going on in recent times here hope you guys enjoy it now a couple of key features that were important to me was one was mobility um, i already had the pickup truck which is a 2001 silverado 2500 hd four-wheel drive it's not necessarily modified outside of a short leveling kit in the front and I put uh, some slightly larger tires on it uh, but a truck like this is is quite mobile uh, off-road uh, I can get most places with this and I but I wanted to combine that with uh, having uh, some sort of camper setup that you know if you wanted to live in it you could or if you're just going out for the weekend or on a longer extended trip you could definitely go there but I had a couple things I want to do number one is I didn't want to even though this truck in and of itself doesn't get great gas mileage, I didn't want to adversely affect that, nor did I want to affect the drivability of the truck in the sense that um, it would limit where I could park, it would limit in some, you know, the height requirements in significant fashions. As you can see here, it sits in the bed of the truck, but it has an aerodynamic profile, so it's not a cab over, which is a, a big aerodynamic drag factor for many of uh, truck campers, but it's still, you, you can't stand in it unless you are very short, but it is high enough to where you can comfortably sit in it. I can stand in there if I'm bending over, at least in the tail area. Um, this truck doesn't get great gas mileage in and of itself. It gets by about 12 and a half miles per gallon if a combination of, of uh, city and freeway. But when I incorporated the camper on there, it really didn't affect it at all. Um, in fact, I don't even notice it's on there from a drivability standpoint. I don't know an exact weight of it, but I would estimate it that it was probably in the 500 pound range. But the top portion of the camper is all um, made out of cedar. Essentially, the camper was skinned with cedar wood, and then this is all lapped together with lap joints. Um, and, you know, it created a, a structural component. The roof uh, has a, um, is, is really just a piece of plywood that has a, uh, that's both dome, uh, port to starboard, and front to back, as you guys can see, to create an aerodynamic profile. And then it has uh, fiberglass and a gel coat on top to waterproof it. Um, I did a, a light color, it's like a tan color gel coat. If you kind of go up here, you might be able to see. And the purpose of that is meant to kind of reflect away heat. I knew that my intent with this was to take it off-road. Mobility was something that was really important. A lot of trail riding. So whatever I built had to be flexible, had to be strong to withstand all the vibrations of the road. I mean, at this point, this camper has hundreds of miles of off-road driving and, and outside of a few minor, uh, you know, a few little minor things that were not structural that have kind of broken or I've had to adjust a little bit, the actual structural aspect of the camper has been solid. So this cabinet here kind of encapsulates, you know, food and cooking, washing hands, sanit sanitation. You know, this is just a little cabinet here with food in it. Um, from a water use standpoint, uh, many people have pumps and all that kind of thing. What I chose to do is I just had this standard seven gallon uh, water tub here and it, and it literally just slides in. Uh, and, and surprisingly enough, this is actually worked out well even off road so I don't even have to bolt it in I can just pull it in and out and then for a drain I actually purchased this uh, 
uh, motorcycle oil drain pan, which is a real low profile. I put it inside of this drawer so I can just slide the drawer in and out. And then for a, for a, a sink, I can just unscrew the, the drain portion, which would be if you're draining the oil in there. And of course, this is brand new. And then you just run the water. It's all gravity feed, so it's no electricity. And you can wash your hands. I could, you know, if I wanted to wash a small uh, plate or something, the water drains in this oil drain pan here. And then this oil drain pan just lifts out of here and it has a dump feature. And I could just, you know, dump it like you would any others. So it's kind of like a mini gray tank for the wastewater from here. So this is a real nice low tech system. It's very inexpensive for you to build. It, I think it looks handsome and it uses no electricity, no pumps, nothing, um, which is, you know, for a basics, it's really good. Um, next to it is, I wanted to put a stove. You know, this is the classic uh, dual, fuel, uh, dual fuel stove and I could cook here or it's, it's removable and I could remove it and you know I could put it here or I could cook outside the uh, the camper or whatever else I want to do but but when you look at it it with the drawers it goes out of space and it looks handsome so over here's uh, the other side uh, just another set of cabinets uh, I mean nothing special just just random storage space um, but this also this drawer right here functions as Kind of uh, the electrical system of the camper. So um, in here I have the solar charge controller, I have um, a fuse box, I have other wires, I you know I have breakers, all these kinds of things. What I did for inverter was I just used this as just a standard um, 300 watt, I think it has 500 watt max, that would be meant to be plugged into a cigarette lighter in a car. I found for my purposes, I'm charging a phone, I'm charging a cell or a laptop. I didn't really need a, a massive inverter for my uses, so I just kept it simple. Uh, this obviously man, you know, has the uh, char uh, the solar monitor on it, um, has a little voltage gauge, which I actually use more than the monitor. Uh, uh, you know, if I have some sort of cigarette lighter accessory, uh, I'll talk about the fridge later, but that's where I plug that in. The light switches for the lights, which are wired in up here. Uh, but just a small talk on the on the electrical system in here is I do have a hundred watt foldable panel which sits on top. Uh, for my purposes, I also plugged in my hundred amp hour battery, which I'll show later, which exists behind this wall in the bed of the truck, to the isolator of of the truck, meaning it's tied into the alternator. And for my purposes, I really found that. Um, in some ways I could have foregone, you know, forego using the solar and just use the isolator in the truck to keep that 100 amp hour battery charge. That actually is more efficient. But the solar panel I suppose is nice if you're parked for a long period, don't start the truck. And it also is a good way to kind of function as a tender for the battery to keep it always topped off, which is better for its longevity. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. For those of you that don't know, a VPN is a virtual private network. It's basically just a way to protect and encrypt your information while you're browsing the internet. It's particularly important for me because I do often use public Wi-Fi. Not so much recently, but occasionally I have still been going to Starbucks parking lots and just hanging out in the parking lot and using the Wi-Fi from time to time. We did that yesterday, actually, when we ran into town to get some groceries. So it is definitely still coming in handy for that sense. And it's also good just to use it even while you're on hot spots or on your home Wi-Fi just to add that extra level of security. It's also been pretty cool to experiment with the GPS location feature that Surfshark has as well. You can log into different servers from all around the world and that allows you to be able to kind of see what Netflix looks like on different sides of the world. We've had a little bit more time out here to be like watching Netflix and hanging out a little bit because we are basically just quarantined in the middle of the desert right now so it's been pretty neat to be able to check that out as well. I would definitely recommend checking out Surfshark guys. There's a link in the description below like I said and if you use the promo code element at checkout you can get an 83 percent discount on an annual subscription as well as an additional month for free thank you again surfshark for sponsoring these videos so this is essentially primarily made for one person uh, so this is just my bed now this actually sits on a pivot that comes up like this on struts um, and uh, underneath here i have just a dc compressor fridge and uh, like I talked about, it has a little cigarette lighter plug, so I can plug that in here when I'm out, uh, out and about. 
Um, some climate control stuff. I have a basic heater, extra fuel bottles, fan, water. Um, I use a, a, a porta potty. I mean, I know the bucket method's real popular. For me, uh, I, I really like that porta potty. Um, it's worked out well for me. Um, there's doors here uh, that allow me to access. There's a significant amount of storage uh, in the bed of the truck between the wheel well and the, and the bed of the truck, which essentially would sit underneath these areas. I can access the back, and then we'll talk about where I can access the front from here. One final consideration when I built this was, for me, uh, I still wanted to be able to use this space if I wanted to use the truck in a traditional fashion. So if you'll notice, the door on this is big. I, I could have made it a lot smaller and expanded cabinet space, but this door is a 36 inch door, which is essentially the standard width for like a household door. And it encompasses most of the space between the bed rails. The, the pro thought process between this bed lifting up is not only is it function as space underneath here, but if I wanted to transport something big, I could take this stuff out. This, if I remove the bedding, will stay up on its own, and then I add in all that extra space to almost get a full length of space within the back of the truck. Because, you know, I mean, it still is a truck and it's still important for me to have space. Um, it has three windows. These are just simple shed windows. They open up, they have a screen. You can see in here, I'll be able to flash my light in there. Um, you know, th there's there's space between the edge of this and the bed and the wheel wells, and and because this is a little bit narrower, so you have an enormous amount of space that goes front to back. So I keep my battery there, you know, basic tie straps, couple things there. Um, and then if you recall from underneath the bed, there was little doors on either side. So in here, I keep just for context of size, I keep a whole hundred amp hour battery. And then all the way in the back, I have recovery supplies, I have tools. This whole thing is, if you can see right here, it is a turnbuckle. Um, and the turnbuckles attach to a fixed point on the bed and to a fixed point on the camper. And that's what holds the camper in the truck of the bed. So a question may arise in terms of like the the time commitment to build this and what this cost. Um, I, I built it in my garage, and uh, I'm not a professional woodworker, but it was, you know, it's something I do. I've done it as a hobby for nearly 20 years. Um, it took me about nine weeks of building it, you know, on the weekends and after work kind of deal. Keep in mind, this is not. This was built from the ground up. Literally, just started with pieces of plywood and and uh, cedar boards. The the total cost. Again, I probably should have calculated that. But I would estimate it to probably be about $2,000 for all of the parts. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, um, a lot of that initial cost would have been in things like solar. And then as you can see the door, as we talked about, is 36 inches wide. So it's a very wide door um, and encompasses most of the inside bed width of the truck. So um, you really get a lot of space in here if you wanted to use it in a traditional storage fashion. And this extends out slightly uh, longer than the truck bed. I believe this truck bed was about six foot six foot five inches and this comes out a total of like seven foot two inches so just a little bit longer. Um, you know but that's that's it in a nutshell. It's it's uh, hasn't affected the drivability of the truck. It's completely custom made from top to bottom and um, for you know for for a primitive camper you know minus a lot of the modern luxury luxuries you'd see in a in a a dedicated RV, you know, this fulfills all of those roles. Um, and you still have a truck that's very drivable and very mobile, uh, both in the city and off-road. Thanks again, Dave, for letting us check out the truck camper and, and showing it off on the channel. I thought it was in a really amazing camper. My favorite thing is definitely the sink setup that he has, that very simple water setup with the motorcycle oil drain pan. thought that that was really neat. I've never seen anything like that before. And Dave does have a YouTube channel of his own as well. It's called Endgame. I'm going to put a link in the description below. And he has quite a few videos on there with the camper and I think some as well going into detail about the build process and how he put the whole thing together. So definitely really awesome camper it was just a random coincidence that we happened to meet up and our paths crossed and i'm really happy that they did david was awesome meeting you in terms of like personal van life things and things that are going on for shannon and i right now we are currently in arizona we moved to arizona we're in a national forest there and we're probably going to be camped here for the 14 day limit and then kind of move on to the next place that's all going to be part of the next video though guys before ending this video i do have a few new patreon pledges to thank 
as well. Shannon Guest, Show My Dog, Diane San Roman, Donf Donf, and Michael Klockner. Thank you guys so much for your support, and thanks for watching, y'all. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.